How do? My name is Andrew Hancock and I am a VMware technical architect from Yorkshire in the United Kingdom. I have worked with VMware since their birth in 1998. So that has been over 24 years I've been working with the VMware product catalogue. Some of my close colleagues may say, if you cut Andy in half these days, it reads VMware like a stick of rock from Blackpool, Pleasure Beach. I have now written 130 articles and recorded 10 hours of VMware vSphere videos for Experts Exchange and received 41 Experts Exchange awards over the last 10 years working with the Experts Exchange community. I am currently the overall number one point earner in the Hall of Fame at Experts Exchange. I am honoured to have been accepted into the VMware vExpert programme since 2011 and more recently a VMware vExpert Pro for the last three years. So welcome back to another edition of VMware Hancock's VMware Half Hour and um, hopefully this isn't going to be 30 minutes but I did promise that we were going to go through and we we're going to have a little look at all these warnings and information stuff that we've got going on on our hosts in this lab. Uh, now you, the, the keen eye amongst you may have noticed that we've got a little exclamation mark on here 6i007 and, uh, and that's because I actually turned back on um, the ESXi shell and SSH enabled. Now you can just hit suppress warning and suppress warning and they'll disappear forever. Um, you can go into advanced settings and you can turn on, you can put a zero um, to enable them again to come back on. I do really, I don't really like to suppress those messages because I do like to know when I've got SSH running on the hosts. And in a production environment, I would only really be enabling SSH whilst I'm actually troubleshooting. I wouldn't leave it permanently enabled all the time, he says. But I have noticed on ESXi 007 that SSH and ESXi shell are running all the time. So I'm going to I'm going to change that shortly. I'm going to go to configure. I'm going to go to services. And if we look at SSH here and we look at the startup policy, it's actually saying start and stop with the host. So I'm just going to turn that off now. I'm going to say do that manually. And I'm going to do that with the SSH shell as well. I'm going to say start and stop manually as well. And I'm just going to check our other hosts here and I'm sure that the policies will be the same start and stop manually start and stop manually and i have covered this before in a previous video and article start and stop manually and start and stop manually so that's why we've currently got a little warning on number seven because they're currently enabled they're currently enabled on number nine and they're currently enabled on number 11. And the whole purpose really of this video, of these video, this sequence of videos I'm doing is so we can get rid of all these little warning messages that are popping up. Because they do really obscure other messages that, that appear. For instance, although we've got um, a warning here that says that these shells are enabled, uh, if we look at this one here, which is highlighting an issue, uh, then we've got two warnings here uh, but we've also got a warning here and we've also got a warning here but they, they're all really sort of kind of shrouded and hidden by the fact that we've got one exclamation mark so today this video we're going to concentrate on the old no no core dump target has been configured uh, host core dumps cannot be saved what's a core dump effectively really if the host panics and crashes uh, and we get that lovely pink screen of death that psod similar to a bsod in windows um, in Windows, um, you'll probably notice that basically it starts writing that dump file to your hard disk in a very similar way to if you get a PSOD in ESXi, it wants to write the core dump somewhere, and it can. Now there have been changes in ESXi 7, um, and due to the current debates and issues over USB flash drives and SSD, and not wanting to write files and wear them out, um, in the latest version of vSphere 7, ESXi 7, the ability to write core dumps to flash media, USB flash and SD has been disabled. So this is why I'm getting an error message on this host. And this host because they only have SD storage. They don't have any local disk. This host here has local disk. 
and the current VMK dump partitional file has been created on local disk. So we're going to we're going to change that as well. But first of all, I actually want to show you uh, how we get rid of this. No core dump target has been configured. Host core dumps cannot be saved. So the first thing we need to do, and we're going to get a bit jiggy with it now. We're going to we're going to get a bit a bit consolely and a bit SSHy. Uh, so just expand that. So the first thing we need to do is to using a command ESLX CLI storage file system list to actually show the file systems that are available to us uh, on our on our host. And the storage system that we're looking for uh, is something called VMFS-L. Now there is a VMware kilobit art KB article for this configuring a diagnostic core dump partition on an ESXi host. I'll put that in the description so you can have a little read of that if you want to and follow that article or you can follow what I do in this video which might be a little simpler. So I'm going to go back to my SSH. Okay so the core dump file must be created on the VMFS-L VMFS-L file system or partition type. And how we do that is by the first thing we need to do is we need to enable our ESXi host to actually be able to write to our SD card or our USB flash drive. And we do this by going back to our advanced system settings and we want to edit our advanced system settings. Now I know that on page 41 <laughs> is where, yeah, sad, is where the option VM kernel boot allow core dumps on USB slash SD cards as well is currently set to false. So unless we actually set that value to true, we will not be able to allow core dumps on our SD card. Now, would I really do this in a production system? Probably not. Uh, I don't really think writing core dumps to a USB flash drive or an SD card. Um, but I think the debate's out on that really. Um, uh, I, I think that's something that you need to consider. I, I don't think it's wise probably anymore to use SD cards or USB flash drives um, for ESXi 7 and ESXi 7 should be actually installed on NVMe, SATA DOM uh, or SSDs or even spinning rust uh, because of the issues that there have been in the past with SD cards. Um, of course you can just suppress these warnings messages um, so that message goes away completely but if you're in a production environment you probably really want to have core dumps available if you're running on um, servers that are on the hardware certified list and you get issues and VMware ask you for a core dump. So for the basis of this particular lab and showing you how to actually get rid of that error message rather than just suppressing it because suppressing it really isn't fixing it. So we want to enable VM kernel boot allow core dumps on USB true. So we've enabled the option to allow core dumps to be written to our SD card. So if I actually go back and use ESX, ESX CLI storage file system list, we can actually see the volume name, which is our VMS-L. So I'm going to use another command. I'm going to use ESX CLI system core dump file add dash D followed by data store. Now our data store is this volume name here so I'm just going to highlight that and I can paste that in there by right clicking followed by dash F followed by our host name ESXi009 followed by a size 2000 followed by enter so that's now created our core dump file so if I now use the command ESXi CLI system core dump file list we should be able to see that file. 
So you can see VMFS volumes, VMK dump, ASXI 009.dump file and size. So that's our core dump file that's been created. And now we just need to enable it. And again, we use the command system core dump file set dash s dash e equals true. And I will put all these commands that I'm using in the notes so that you can basically cut and paste them straight out into an SSH session, followed by enter. So now if I just basically drop back to looking at ESX live system core file list, can you now see that it says it's active, true, and it's configured true? And if we go back to our ESXi009 summary, can we actually now see that it's gone? So I'm going to do I'm going to repeat exactly the same with number 11. So again, I have an SSH session open, number 11, and I'm going to use again okay so this is the vmfs l volume that we're interested in but of course remember that i need to go to the advanced settings if you like i'll put this tip in there as well it's on page 41 and if we Again, I click true, okay. So, <coughs> excuse me. So I've now made the changes so that our core dump file can be, can be created on our ESXi host. So I'm gonna go back to our SSH session and I'm now basically gonna use ESXCLI ESX system core dump file add dash D. I'm going to highlight our volume name followed by dash F followed by the name of our server dash S 2000. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to go back up here to the summary. Uh, so we should be able to see when I've enabled this core dump. Okay, so that's telling me. Ah, I was just, I was just thinking then, it actually tells me that Detestel Locker is not VMFS, and I'm thinking, well, that's a bit strange because it definitely looks like VMFS to me. It's VMFS L. But did you actually basically notice there, idiot, that I didn't actually basically copy all that correctly? I was missing a three on the end. So I'm going to just do that again. Okay. And if we look at the file list. And we can see there that our core dump file, ESXi 011.dump file, is currently being created on that VMFS-L partition. Currently false, false. So I'm going to quickly enable it. And what we're going to look at here is, of course, the moment that that's enabled, then that error message there basically is going to disappear. Well, I was hoping that that was going to disappear very, very quickly. Um, let's just have a little look. It says true and true. That is ESXi 011. It's possible that it could just do with a quick refresh. And we'll have a little look. There we go. So, there we go. So, in this video, I've showed you very quickly how to enable core dumps to be written to a USB or an SD card. And we've actually basically used the SSH console on both those hosts. Uh, to create a core dump file and activate it. So a quick one this was, um, you know, 14 minutes, so we're getting better.
So, come back shortly and uh, we'll have a little look at uh, this particular issue here uh, where this host is potentially vulnerable to issues described in CVE 2018-3646. Um, so again, thank you very much for watching and uh, be safe out there.